Brian, sorry. So welcome everyone. It's a pleasure seeing you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, this is another fun adventure with Deep Learning Adventures, a fun and engaging community with members around the world and around this beautiful country here in the US. Um, if you joined us for the first time, welcome uh, online on YouTube as well. Thank you for posting your comments. If you're joining us for the first time uh, on Meetup, again, welcome. I want to make sure you'll feel appreciated. Um, I'm joined today by my great friend and colleague and co-founder, David. Um, Robert, uh, our other friend and colleague, is traveling this week, so he won't be able to join us, but just wanted to extend our welcome. Cool. So let's get things started. I'll share our screen here. Um, so as I mentioned, you can find us on, on Meetup, uh, Deep Learning Adventures. Um, we started this generative AI uh, adventure recently, maybe two, three weeks ago. Um, and really, really, um, the goal was a educational, but also gain some hands-on practice with this gender generative pre-trained model, GPT uh, transformers. So, uh, if you just join us, we have a YouTube page where you can see our previous recordings. Um, we had a great session with uh, two um, uh, interviews. Um, uh, from CEO uh, Sundar Pichar on from Google CEO as well as Sam Alpan and Greg uh, Brockman from OpenAI. So we we listened to these two podcasts and they were being interviewed, and you could see the difference of how you know OpenAI and Google approach the uh, generative uh, adventure. So if you haven't checked it out, if you want some more company background, I would say, technologically speaking. So that's a good resource. And then the other resource we had was this uh, ChatGPT prompt engineering for developers. And I want to make sure I share deep learning AI's resources. So these are the short courses we're going through. Uh, we went through prompt engineering for developers that generated several sessions for us. And um, that also prompted us to go through OpenAI's API. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And then that also led us to have some hands-on experience with several projects, which if you go to our meetup, you'll see more sessions coming. And then in December, we're going to um, build on top of that by building systems using the ChatGPT API. So if you're curious what's coming up in December, this is the course we're going to cover. So having said that, um, YouTube page is there. We have a Slack if you want to join us, as well as um, this, this this series is recorded and will be posted on this playlist here uh, on our YouTube page. Cool. So today, if you head out to um, OpenAI under Overview, they have a tutorial, which I encourage you to check out. They have um, documentation for their core product, uh, products. GPT, embeddings, image generation, fine tuning, speech to text, and all that. They have this section called examples, and that's what we're going to cover today. It's pretty extensive. It has use cases across different industries and different applications. Um, we'll try our best and cover as many of them as we can today, maybe half of them. And then next week, we're going to cover the rest of them. So all you need is you need to be logged in um, to do this. And then when you click on it, so let's say if I click on grammar correction, you'll see a description, you'll see a prompt, you'll see a sample output. And if you want to use the API, you can use that too. In this case, uh, we won't be using API, we'll just be interacting with the user interface. So there's this feature uh, here called open on in playground that will open a new tab for you. And this is where you're going to see the, the prompt. And if you want to add a message, you can say, uh, sorry, Submit. That will do your assistant. Let me get rid of this. And then if you want to add a message as a user, and if you want to type, this is a sample. Hola, hijo. Sample text. So submit. You can see that here. Um, perfect. 
so what I did is I actually uh, went through this exercise. And if you see here, you have this option to save the preset, uh, view the code. You can actually look at the code in the back end, what it does. Uh, you can share it and uh, you can look at the different options that we have here. So in this case, we have chat. That's the API we're going to use. Uh, the model, you can use GBD 3.4, 1.5 Turbo, the, the higher end of it. This is 4K context. Um, so it can only hold 4K tokens. And that includes both your user input as well as the system assistant output. Uh, show more models. You have more models you want to try. We're going to keep the 3.5 one. We briefly talked about this, but temperature is the, the randomness in the system. So lower, you're going to get more deterministic output. Higher, you're going to be more creative. Um, um, this, I think, um, was didn't play a significant role for me. Most of my problems were short, but some of them actually exceeded this 256. Um, so... I'm not sure what, what the purpose of this maximum length was. Uh, I don't have any stop sequences here. Um, and then some other options that hopefully we can check out in the documentation. So as you can see, these are my presets. I'm, I'll, I'll check out the grammar correction. Um, you know, some typos here, she you know, went to the market, the assistant responded, she did not go to the market. And the prompt for that, the system prompt, we, we've talked a little bit about this, so there's the system prompt where you advise your AI system to behave in a specific way. So in this case, we will provide it with statements. That's what we're advising. And your task is to convert them to standard English. And the user is us or another application. And the assistant is uh, the GBD 3.5 Turbo model, keeping in mind what the system prompt is. Then I have another prompt here. I don't look. I don't know about you all, but this looks great. He corrected to, I don't know about you all, but this looks great. <laughs> so, no, we did chat. All right. You ain't want to look. Sorry, somebody's on the mic. Another typo. I got it. Okay, thank you. It's another typo. So, is that easy? No code. Um, you don't have to worry about APIs. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, if you're curious, again, you can look at it, but so far it's that easy. So that's the first one. There's several of them. So if you have any comments, questions, you know, feel free to post them in the chat. Uh, otherwise I'll move to the, to the next one. Uh, the next one I think is summarize. All right, if I go back to my list. Okay, so grammar, summarize, parse, emoji. <laughs> Uh, oops, sorry, this doesn't look like the right one. Let me move zoom out of the way. Okay, summarize. So what is the system prompt? Summarize content you're provided with for a second grade student. So this is our input here. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun and the largest in the solar system. It has a mass 1,000 that of the sun, but two half that of all the other planets combined. It's the brightest object visible to the naked eye in the night sky. So it has some technical information, right? That's the prompt. Now the assistant, based on the system prompt, will try and uh, simplify it for us. So Jupiter is a really big planet in our solar system. It's the ninth, it's the fifth planet from the sun and it's the largest planet. It's called a, a, a gas giant because it's mostly made of gas. It's also much smaller than the sun. Remember it was 1,000th of the sun but it's bigger than all the other planets combined. It can be, it can be seen in the sky even when, and it can even cast shadows on earth. So I don't know about you, but that to me, that was a very simplified version of, you know, this Wikipedia like text. This is a much simpler one. Um, I encourage you to check it out, but yeah, this was another good one. Summarization for a very specific style. Okay. Emoji. So what is the prompt? Prompt is you'll provide it with text and your task is to translate it into emojis. <laughs> Sometimes when you're stuck with ideas about emojis, you know, this is a good one. Do not use any regular text. Do your best with emojis only. So what is our user input? AI is a technology with great promise. 
Um, zoom in a little bit so you can see them. Um, you see the AI, great idea, thumbs up. <laughs> looking forward to seeing you all at our next deep learning adventure. <laughs> it kind of got the looking, got the, uh, some books here, Zoom, Adventure. I, I guess you got some mountains, some stars, <laughs> some sky here, some rocket. That was, that was interesting. Um, for outdoor, for uh, workout spans there. So I love CrossFit, especially double unders and hands that walks. <laughs> so, you know, this emoji, weightlifting, heart, upside down, and walks. <laughs> is it is it indicating for our adventures as well as the CrossFit that there's going to be an explosion at the end? <laughs> for adventure, yeah. For this one... I don't oh. know. <laughs> oh, yeah. It doesn't have it there yet. It's the one above. It doesn't have it, yeah. Then I did the opposite. I gave this as input, which was our emoji output. And somehow I thought, oops, sorry, you want me to correct something. So it says, apologize for the previous incorrect response. Here's the correct translation. <laughs> so did it change anything? Let's see. Book, microscope, zoom, mountains. No, it looks the same to me. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please submit. Okay, thank you. City, who joining us Moon tonight. <laughs> okay, I'll say this actually. Uh, and when you save, uh, because this is a, a template that I already saved, you can do update or you can save it as new uh, with a new title. You can change the description. You can share also the link, right? If I want to share the link with you guys, I can do that here. Cool. So that was the emoji one. Uh, what's the next one? Parse and structure data and then calculate. So you'll be provided with unstructured data and your task is to parse it into CSV format. That's the task at the system level. Um, so this is a made up text and you'll see what is the actual task. So there are many fruits that were found on the recently, recently discovered planet. This one, uh, this and that, candy. So made up names, um, how was it? Interesting context are plenty of whatever those are and what i'm asking for is a um a summary right but a structure summary so what it did is it gave me three lists i mean three columns a list of items of fruit color taste so it picked up what's the name of the fruit it's made of fruit the color and the taste um I don't know on top of my head if there's any unstructured uh, text out there that maybe we can summarize. Maybe maybe financial, maybe. Maybe you have like a long text of different stocks and you want to uh, copy paste them here and get a structure back. I think that, that'd be one use case. So that was unstructured data. Um, next one remind me was emoji calculate. Okay, calculate. This was a good one. As you can see, I experimented a lot. So the system prompt is you'll be provided with Python code and your task is to calculate its uh, time complexity. So we have a Python function here. It expects two arguments. Uh, it has an accumulation, a, accumulation uh, pr a parameter variable. It has a double for loop here. And all it does is it goes through this n by k uh, matrix and just adds up, um, I guess, the items here. So this system will come back with us to us with the time complexity for this. So it says that it's O of n times k, where n is the value in the variable n and k is the value in the variable k. This is because there are two nested loops, one iterating n times and the other iterating k times. This operation is executed n times k times, resulting in this complexity. Cool. So I asked you to look at a slightly more advanced uh, example, this factorial, right? So the exit case, if it's one return one, else return the current value, 
times recursive the previous value, the factorial of x minus one. And then num is three, and what is the factorial of three? This one gave me of O of n. I don't think this is O of n. Um, I think um, uh, if you look at time complexity for factorial, right? It's O of factorial n because it goes, you know, uh, in a factorial way. So. I'm not sure if this one I like as an as an output. Um, I I try to use a simpler one if else statement constant. There's there's no variable here. Um, I try the list and getting the first element. Again, constant. Um, I tried another list where you print the. You skip every, you, you go through the list, but not in consecutive order. You go every third element. The, the, the step size is three. So it gave me that the complexity is all of n divided by three, all of n. Cool. Binary search. Um, binary search, if you know, if you remember, it's of log, log n, where n is the size of your list. Uh, for loop of n, linear search of n. Um, let's see, merge sort. Merge sort has a slightly different complexity, I think. Yeah, it was n log n. That was interesting, I got that right. And then let's see, what else did I try? Double loop. Um, so data, data, so data square, basically n square. Bubble sort, bubble sort says n square, the worst and best is of n. Um, is that true? Okay, this is a good reminder for me. <laughs> Open square. Yeah. Fibonacci told me it's two to the n. Fibonacci series. I think that's correct. Um, key permutation of n factorial. And then some other ones. Cool. I have some links here. Um, so yeah, you see, you see how it works. I I wouldn't trust it hundred percent. Um, maybe for your use case, you know, you take a closer look or you 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 look at the answer basically and see think critically if this uh this makes sense. Any questions so far, comments? All right, so the next one, <clears throat> uh, is it explain code? Yeah, explain code is in keywords, okay. So the system prompt is you'll be provided with a piece of code and your task is to explain it in a concise way. Okay, let's go to the beginning. So this is my code, it might, let me zoom in a little bit so we can all see. Um, so I have a class here. This was actually from the example itself. If it doesn't exist, create a directory, uh, get the size of the path. Um, I think do a read of, of a file here. Look at the event, maybe store it somewhere. So, okay, lots of, lots of events here. So what does it do? So this is used to log events to a file. The init method initializes the class. It takes a file as an argument, creates a directory if it doesn't exist, and opens the file in append mode. Okay, so this is exactly this part here. Then uh, it also checks if the file ends with a new line character, and if not, adds one. It's used to log an event. It takes an event as an argument, adds a unique identifier to the event using the UID module, converts the event to a JSON string, and writes it to the file followed by a new character. Okay, that's this part here, and then the state part. Um, I was experimenting with it, so I said, 
This is a Google search. You can install this library called Google. You can import search. You can do a query on medium.com and you can print the URL. So this one, the output is that this is a module to search for a specific query on Google uh, search. And you can print out the URLs of the search results. Uh, sorry, one second, my lights went off. Um, the search function from the Google search module is used, used to perform a Google search. Then it's generate a list of URLs and then the for loop just goes through them and prints out the search results. Cool. Then I had a, a more advanced one on, on multi-threading here in Python. As you know, Python is not the best for multi-threading, but I wanted to give it a go. So print Q, print square, do that in different threads, wait for them to be completed, and then print done. So this demonstrates the concept of threading. Threading allows the program to perform multiple tasks concurrently. These two functions perform something, and then two threads are created, um, they're executed, and then the join is then called, which causes the main program to wait for each thread to finish before continuing. And then you print done. So pretty good, huh, so far. I asked something on decorators, if you know about Python decorators, hello decorator, you can give me a decent answer. I asked something about OpenAI, <laughs> chat completion create. <laughs> um, it gave me also a good answer. Um, temperature controls the randomness of the model output. Max tokens is the max length of the model output. The response is in the response variable. It's pretty good, huh? Yeah. Um, George, quick question. You know, in the real world, code comments usually don't reflect what the code actually does. I wondered if you gave it incorrect comments. And mm -hmm. I wonder if it's actually reading the comments or it's getting it's getting everything from uh, the actual code. Okay. So you wanted to add something irrelevant, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. That's a good point. Okay. So user. Let's see. Um Calculate, just some random, right? Uh, import, I don't know, TensorFlow. <laughs> um, open a file and write to it. Uh, create my own custom class. How about that? Not even close to what it's doing. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, submit. Okay, so use the OpenAI to generate a response. It imports OS and OpenAI. It's the value of the environment key. Then you use the create Oh, look at this comment. Please, not the comment <laughs> of the code. Do not accurately describe the code. For example, the code does not calculate the current day. <laughs> Open a file or create a custom class. Look at that. <laughs> All right. So uh, D minus or F on comments. <laughs> a plus on code. <laughs> okay, I like this. I'll update my template here. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Cool. What is the next one down the list? And feel free to post your questions, please, or comments, or unmute yourself. Uh, keywords, product name generator. Keywords. Okay. So you'll be provided with a block of text, and your task is to extract a list of keywords from it. Okay. So let me zoom in a little bit more so we can read it. So black on black is a 20th, 21st century po uh, pottery tradition developed by Pueblo Native American ceramic artist, Northern New Mexico. Okay. Uh, produce smooth, smooth surface. Um, okay. Carving or incising designs and selectively polishing the raised areas. Okay. So a lot of content here. What are some keywords, right? So black on black wear, 20th, 21st century. 
I don't know. It's almost like a like a sampling method to me, right? Ceramic artist, Northern New Mexico, traditional smooth surface design, selective. It's almost like if somebody saw an image, how do you describe it with sample text? That's what it reminds me a little bit of, or maybe hashtags. Here's another one. This is from TechSpace. Space is an open source software library used for advanced NLP, written in Python and Cython. It's published under the MIT license. Um, the founders have a company called Explosion. So the keywords are spacey, open source, advanced NLP, programming language, MIT, and all that. So pretty, pretty interesting, I would say, distillation of information that's here into several keywords. Um, keyword extraction, Python. Oh, sorry, I gave it a URL. Um, I gave it a URL and for some reason I was able to, uh, I don't know, from the URL, give me the, yeah, keyword extraction, NLP towards data science. I think it just parts the content of the URL. I don't think it opened it. And then I copy paste this, I think from the paper, attention is all you need. And it gave me some of main keywords. So that's on the extract a list of keywords from it. Maybe you can use this for inspiration for hashtags, I don't know, or maybe the summarization when you have a, when you publish your paper, I think it's a list of keywords. Cool. Go to the next one, product name generator. So you'll be provided with a product description and seed words, and your task is to generate product names. Okay, so I'm zoom in. So the description is a home look shake maker. Seed words are is fast, healthy, and compact. I don't know. You know, give me some ideas. I'm I'm starting my own product here. <laughs> so quick blend, fit mix, slim shake, speedy milk. You know, Vita blend. <laughs> pretty good names. Pretty good names for a product, right? Okay. Um, this is a product name generator. That's where seed words is name generate product imagination. So um, this is a product of a product, I'd say. <laughs> generate X, name, imagine. Okay, I want to create my own large language model. I want it to be on LLM language model AI chat. So you gave me Lingua AI, model talk, Lang Genius, Lingo, Linguai, that's cute. AI yeah, converse. Really good names. It's interesting that it, it knows to not use ones that are already out there. Right? Yeah, that's interesting, right? I don't see any GPT. They're all, they're all novel. Right? Yeah. So I like this. This was a good one. Okay. Next one is a good one. So you'll be provided with a piece of code in Python, and your task is to find bugs and fix them. So I have import random. Two random numbers, A, B, question, what is A times uh, B? Um, you ask the user the question. Um, if the answer is A, so if the answer equals, instead of equals, equals A times B, well done, else no. And there's some bugs here, right? Let's see. There's also a for loop here. Okay. Python is case sensitive. So the module should be, Capital R random, not lowercase, uppercase random. It's number one. A and B should be inside a loop. Otherwise, guess what? They are constant here. Nice. Uh, in the question variable, you're trying to concatenate string with integers, which will raise a type error. So this part here will fail. Uh, you need to convert a string using str in the if statement using an assignment operator instead of comparison operator right here. And then the print statement in the if is missing quotes around the string. Print well done. <laughs> and the input function returns a string, so you need to convert answer to an integer as well. So here's the correct code, by the way. So lowercase r, my variables inside the loop, joining them properly, equals equals, double quotes. I think that was that was a great one. Okay, um, 
I had another one here. Uh, this has to do with Python and mutable code. Um, it also gave me the right the right answer here with um, uh, setting the value in, uh, in the argument. Uh, how about this one? I have a list and I'm trying to uh, ask the third element, right? Zero, one, two. Um, but that's not how I catch exceptions, right? So um, here's the correct syntax. So try this, except value error, index error. So it will catch now both value error and index error instead of, so those parentheses missing. Okay, I just Googled some top 10 mistakes that Python programmers make. Um, it read this URL, doesn't contain any Python codes. So it couldn't just, couldn't fix it for me. <laughs> Actually, it looks like it went through. It says cover topics like mutable default arguments, misuse of expression as defaults or function arguments, misunderstanding Python scope rules. So let me open this so you can see what it is. Misusing expressions as default using class variables incorrectly, specifying parameters incorrectly, scope, modifying a list while iterating over it. So I think that's pretty accurate here. Huh? Yeah. Well, this one, it was able to actually parse it. <laughs> that was a good feature. So yeah, next time you have a piece of code and if you're curious on how it would look like if it is any errors, you know, give this a go. Okay. Uh, system prompt is you're a helpful assistant, pretty generic. And the input is created two column CSV of science fiction movies along with year of release. So movie, comma, year, you know, Matrix, Star Wars, all that. Maybe this is good for like prototyping if you need like a quick CSV file or CSV content for your own experimentation. You know, this is a good one. I had one to give me the national average 30 year fixed mortgage rate. You know, so you can see in the 90s, it was 10, 9, 7, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3. Do, 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 do. It stopped in 2020 because that's probably when it was trained. Print the previous one in ASCII chart. Uh, I've seen some tutorials online where you can actually have like an ASCII chart. <laughs> um, it just gave me that as an ASCII. I was trying to ask it more. I said, give me the x-axis to be the year and the mortgage rate to be the y. I tried, it didn't do a great job. It just tells me that ASCII maybe is not the best way to print things. <laughs> And then generate a CSV for all the president in their year of service as a second column. So George Washington from this year to this year. Do, 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 do. Did you try markdown? Uh, no, I just I just told it as a CSV. Um, then I asked it something different. Create a CSV with all the important papers related to large language models and their year of release. So. This was a good one. Maybe it's a good topic for covering papers. So it starts from, you know, attention paper in 2017, bird GPT-2, GPT-3, and so forth. Um, oh, their size. The only thing I added is their size parameters. So it gave me that, the model, the size, and the year was a good one um, yeah so if you're looking for you know some sample data or if you're curious about a list I think I think it's a good way to generate it cool next one I'm next I'm going down the list so keyword spreadsheet creator okay um with keywords in the spreadsheet, get away the airport code extractor. Let's do that if you don't mind. 
Oh, there it is. So the, the system prompt is you'll be provided with a text and your task is to extract the airport codes from it. So on a flight from Orlando to Boston, airports uh, codes are MCO and VOS. I want to fly from DC to San Francisco, then LA and back to DC. So DC has two. It has the Ronald Reagan as well as the Dallas International. San Francisco has SFO and LA has LAX. I fly to Tirana, Saloniki, Bologna, Zurich, Ireland, DC. This was my summer trip. <laughs> so it gave me the TIA, SKG, BLQ, CRH, KF, and then DC has two. So it gave me both. So it did a pretty good job, I'd say. Um, in case, I don't know, I mean, what I would use this, but maybe Google Flight, but usually Google Flight has its own search. You just enter the city and it gives you all the available options. Okay, uh, then let's do mood to color and then the fitness idea. Okay, so you'll be provided with a description of a mood and your task is to generate the CSS code for a color that matches it your output in JSON with a single key called CSS code. And these are colors, so I have a, a website here. Let me see, I'm gonna move my zoom. Um, there it is. So let me open this for us. So that we can look at things. So I said blue sky at dusk. He gave me this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add it here. And he gave me this one. <laughs> uh, beautiful sunrise in DC. Let's see, sunrise, hopefully. There you go, give me kind of warmer color. Um, okay. Sunset, let's see. Let's see if we can get, distinguish sunrise with sunset. Okay, a little bit darker. Sunrise, sunset. And then um, this is just a note from the, the URL. I found this. Okay, this was a sunrise. Cool. It's a good one. In case you're out of ideas, you know how to color code my 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 website or my my side project. You know, you can be inspired by this one. Cool. Okay, a couple more. Um, PR fitness. Did I miss it? Turn by turn, brainstorm some ideas. Maybe this one. Um, okay, yeah. Based on some ideas, combining VR and fitness. So zoom in a little bit. So, so it could be a game. So create virtual reality games that require physical movement and exercise. It could be a trainer. You develop a virtual personal trainer. Create virtual fitness classes. You know, ask users to join live or pre-recorded sessions. We are cycling, sports simulations, fitness challenges, and a. Uh, a VR gym. Okay. Uh, again, the prompt is very generic, right? So you're a helpful assistant. How about some ideas on how to introduce and describe large language models to data scientists? You can have interactive workshops. You can experiment with hands-on tutorials and exercises, webinars, online courses, similar to what we're doing, case studies and new studies, maybe on a specific field. Let's see. Text generation, sentiment analysis, question answering, documentation, API references, collaborative research project. That'd be cool. Post your community where you can share your findings, challenges, best practices, online forums and communities. Okay, and then how do we do the same, but how do you introduce them to someone with no technical background? Maybe you have simple explanatory videos, right? Uh, storytelling and analogies, uh, interactive demos, maybe infographics and visualizations, and some real real world examples like customer service, content generation, language translation, and so forth. Okay, I work I work in I work in real estate. So how do you just 
described them to real estate agents. Maybe, you know, something similar to the previous case, some workshops, industry specific cases, um, customized training materials, webinars, and maybe virtual assistant integration. Yeah. Um, and these are applications of large language models for, for real estate. So property description, that's a very popular one. We use it all the time. Client communication, property tours, market analysis and predictions, uh, content generation for marketing. I think this applies to every industry. And then translation for international clients. So you, as you can tell, it's um, that's a decent job, right? I mean, again, you have to review it and you have to add your own twist to it. But from an inspiration perspective, I think it does a great job. Cool. Two more. Actually, I'll go with turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions. <laughs> then I'll, I'll save the, the sarcastic bot in the end because it's interesting to interact with. <laughs> okay, so the system prompt is you'll be provided with text and your task is to create a numbered list of turn-by-turn -turn directions from it. So um, I'm not sure where this area is, but go south on 95 until you hit the boulevard, Sunrise Boulevard, then take it east to US-1 and head south. Balver Q will be on your left after several miles. So this is a, a breakdown. Go south, continue 95 until you reach sun, Sunrise Boulevard. Um, hit east. Follow this. I'm not sure if we got this right. Take a right. Take a left, and then you'll see. I live. I live here, so I'm pretty familiar with the area. I said start at Lincoln Memorial and head towards the White House, then towards the Capitol. So begin at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., that's correct. Head east towards the White House. That is also correct. Continue the same road until you, you reach the White House, okay? Then again, east towards the Capitol, follow the road until you reach the Capitol. <laughs> kind of high level, but the direction is correct. You have, you have to go east. Yeah. Cool. So let's look at the, the sarcastic one. Okay. You're Marv, a chatbot that reluctantly answers questions with sarcastic responses. Okay. So my question is, how many pounds are in a kilogram? This again, <laughs> there are 2.2 pounds in a kilogram. Please make note of this. Okay. What does HTML stand for? Was Google so busy? <laughs> I mean, the jokes are funny a little bit. Hypertext markup language. The T is for trying to ask better questions in the future. <laughs> When did the first airplane fly? December 17, 1903. The Wright brothers made their first flight. I wish they'd come and take me away. <laughs> you know, what time is it? Time to get a watch? Just kidding. I don't think they tell the time, but it was a funny answer. What is the answer to the biggest question ever? And the answer is 42, but don't ask me what the question is. I'm not that deep. Can you assist me with? Um, I'm a sarcastic chatbot. I can answer questions, provide information, entertain you. How can I disappoint you today? <laughs> can you change your tone to funny and charming? I'm like, I've had it with you. <laughs> oh, you're tired of my sarcasm. Yeah, you want some funny and charming vibes. Well, I give it a shot, but I don't expect too much. <laughs> and I said, um, what's your favorite place to visit? Uh, unicorns and rainbows, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. So I'm stuck here chatting with you. Lucky me. Oof. <laughs> What's a good title for a presentation on large language models? How about unleashing the power of big brains, exploring large language models? Catchy, informative. It might make people think you actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, man. Increase your sarcasm to the max. Okay. I'm like, okay. You didn't go to the left, go to the right and tell me a joke. Okay. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Okay, hilarious. All right. <laughs> hilarious indeed. <laughs> yeah, if uh, you want some snarky jokes, you know, <laughs> you can ask your sarcastic chatbot here. Well, this is good because you can try different personas, right? Maybe you can try, I don't know, some other persona here. And you have a personality for your chatbot instead of a plain vanilla one. Cool. Uh, I think that's all of them that we did this time. Again, 
this resource is there for you under uh, under this uh, examples. It's very easy to to try out, right? You just click on it. You open it in Playground. You can see it if you wanna don't wanna open it, and um, you gotta play with it. I think I have to say that it does use your API in the back end, so you need some credits. It's not free. I forgot to mention that in the beginning, but yeah. I, when I was using it, it didn't immediately refresh on my usage, but after a day or two, I think I saw some usage, you know, a few cents. So not that much. Cool. So this was half of it. Um, next week, we're going to cover the rest of them. Um, this, again, is a, is a inspiration for you to have your own creative ideas and and system prompts. I'll stop sharing at this point. Um, I can find my Zoom. Um, View, show meeting controls. There you go. Okay. It was there was one interesting uh, question and answer in the chat. Um, Preeti, I think, asked uh, how how the emoticons worked with other languages. If they oh. and um, tried it out, and apparently they work, but not quite as well as they were with the English. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Did you try another language? They did. I, I don't know which thing. It's pretty okay. interesting. No, I didn't try another language. That's good. Hindi. Okay. Yeah. Did it. It was okay. Okay job. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he said it did okay, but not as well as English. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was just, um, I don't know, like, I, I took time to understand the emojis. So, if you know if you're if you're if you're uh, willing to invest some time to understand the text to emoji, then it's it may you, you can it still interpret it, but then otherwise it's um yeah just stick to English. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe translate translate it to English, and then give it as input. I don't know. Yeah, um, I was trying. To I was trying with the movie names and um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I have seen some people posting, you know, like let's translate the movie name or the song, which song is it? So I was just giving it a try with that. And um, yeah, I don't think if I post it somewhere, people will uh, be able to uh, translate it to text back or the original movie name if I go Hindi yeah. to emojis, yeah. I don't know about emojis, but I OpenAI has this GPT-4 um, chart here on on translation accuracy for different languages. So it's pretty good in in like English, Italian, African, Spanish, German, and then Hindi. Hindi. I don't. I I see dialects here, right? Like Punjabi. Right. So yeah, it's somewhere mixed. I think Punjabi. Marathi, I don't know, Telugu, but Bengali, yep. So yeah, it would be a mix of uh, these, so maybe not that good at Hindi. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Any other comments, questions, feedback? Again, this is a, a cool resource. Um, that you can use anytime. Okay, so let me share my screen again uh, about what is coming up in the near future. Um, so next week, actually, next Wednesday, we have the second version of this. Look at all of us. So we'll look at another 10 to 15 applications uh, using the same playground uh, feature. Now we're gonna switch gears. So the OpenAI API uh, created some really good content for us. They have some examples, but I like this one here. It's basically a custom AI assistant for your 
I want to say public company data. So if you have all your content on your website, you know, the traditional ways for you to maybe have a search functionality like here in Meetup and then you search for something, you get back some links. This is taking it to the next step where you ask a question, you know, something related to um, to your company, in this case, Meetup would be when is the next deep learning adventures event. You should be able to parse that information, you know, web scrape it, parse it, embed it. You should be able to search for it and then give you the answer. Or oh, the next event is November 25th, October 25th, and November 1st. So this is what we call uh, this customer assistant. Technically, it's called uh, Q and A website Q and A with embeddings and this retrieval augmented generation rack. So we'll talk about that. It's a cool technique to basically provide context to your AI assistant. And then we're, go we're going to switch gears from text. We're going to go to audio. And we'll use uh, November eight, the Whisper API. The Whisper is a model that OpenAI developed for transcribing audio to text. And once you have a text, you can use the uh, the, the usual chat completion API to do any kind of task like summarization. Then we'll take a break for uh, uh, for Thanksgiving. I also have a work-related trip, so I won't be able to do much the second part of November. We'll resume first week of December, um, where we'll talk about the second course called Building System with a ChatGPT API. So that's another resource. So yeah, the next one is online, but then other three ones are hybrid, you know, both in person and online, depending on if you live in this year or not. So we'll do them hybrid as as we did them last uh, couple of weeks. If you've asked about, about the recording, we'll post it here. Um, and then you should be able to see it. Thank you for posting the recording. I mean, the URL. Thank you, David. That's all we had. Any, anything else for anyone before we stop recording and leave it open for chit chat? No? Okay. Stop recording. For those watching us online, thank you and hope to see you online.